What I have here in this box is a laptop, believe it or not, a very thin laptop, a very light laptop. In fact, it's 1.99 pounds or 907 grams. Yep, it's a featherweight that packs a punch. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the ThinkPad X1 Nano. Coming up. Now, before we begin, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. This unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Lenovo. Pricing starts at $1,475.40 over at Lenovo.com. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy one. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Okay, packaging is pretty typical ThinkPad packaging. You get a USB-C power adapter. It's a 65 watt power adapter that supports rapid charge. Now, the smaller box houses the unit itself. And once we get the plastic off and lift the lid, you are greeted by the unit itself. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. But you also get some safety and warranty information as well as a setup guide. And holding the unit for the first time, first impression is, wow, this thing is incredibly thin and light. At 1.99 pounds or 907 grams, this thing is ridiculous. I, it's hard to show you in a video, people. This thing is super light. And to give you a size comparison, here it is with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3. As you can see, a much smaller footprint. Although they're both thin devices, this is obviously thinner as well. And here you can see the carbon fiber weave of the X1 Extreme, which is also an option if you get the touch model of the Nano. And here it is with the Dell XPS 13 9310. And as you can see, a pretty identical footprint, if you ask me. And not only is this super thin and light, but it also has been tested against 12 military grade requirements and more than 200 quality checks, making this extremely durable. And that's thanks to the magnesium alloy chassis that is designed to take a licking and keep on ticking. Okay, let's check out the ports. We'll start off on the left side. We get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now, there are also USB 4 ports as well. And what this does with the Thunderbolt 4 port is you can drive one 8K monitor or two 4K monitors if you so choose. Again, I like the combination that they have of both USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4. And on the right side is the power button with an LED indicator light in it, letting you know the device is powered on. Notably missing is any SD card or micro SD card reader. Now, I like the fact that they include a spill resistant keyboard here. I always spill water or coffee near my computers. It's just, I'm a klutz. What can I tell you? But it is nice to have some spill resistance on this. And of course, it also has a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And I also like the dedicated communication keys, especially when you're doing Skype and Zoom calls when we're working from home during this pandemic. That's really good. Now, I am a big fan of ThinkPad keyboards. To me, they're legendary. They're some of the best in the business, if not the best. Now, the one on this one is very good, although I noticed the key travels a bit on the shallow side, but it does have good tactile feedback, and I didn't feel like my fingers were bottoming out. So that's really good. I'll give it a long-term test and let you know my results in the full review. And it also has a really nice touchpad with physical mouse buttons and two-finger scrolling, buttery smooth, all the Windows 10 gestures work as advertised, and it also has the track point, a hallmark of, of course, a ThinkPad, and that worked well, very responsive, no complaints on that front. And when it comes to user upgradability, once again, Lenovo makes it easy for the user to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that easy. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the SSD is user upgradable, although you get some decent reads and writes. Now, I only have the 256 gigabyte SSD. I imagine you might get better reads and writes if you went with a higher capacity drives. I'm not really sure, but I'll let you know if I find out any more information. Now, as far as the RAM, you can get it with a maximum of 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. Although it is soldered into the motherboard, you won't be able to upgrade that for those that are wondering. It is Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, and it also is the optional wireless WAN with LTE 5G or LTE 4G Cat 9. 
And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has a 48 watt hour battery that Lenovo claims will get up to 13 hours on a single charge. Of course, I'll bring you my full review with all the numbers as far as battery life and charging times. And when it comes to the display, what we're looking at here is a 13 inch 2K display with a resolution of 2160 by 1350. That's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It's an IPS display with an anti-glare coating. It's also a Dolby Vision display that Lenovo claims will get up to 400 nits in terms of brightness with 100% coverage of the sRGB in terms of the color gamut. Now I did my measurements, I didn't get quite 450 nits, but I did get a very bright 405 nits and especially really good because this is not a glossy display, it's a matte display and that's very good. So you won't get any unnecessary glare or reflections. Really deep blacks, nice white points, good contrast, and it has a nice low Delta E score, meaning the color accuracy is very good. And as far as that coverage of the color gamut, I measured 93% sRGB, 71% Adobe RGB, 70% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut and 66% NTSC, making this a good choice for those content creators that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And I like this for getting work done with that 16 to 10 aspect ratio, a little bit taller in terms of the display, meaning you'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. And because it's a Dolby Vision display, it's a great choice for consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube has been great so far. And you could also get it with a touch option. I have the non-touch display, but if you do get that touch display, you also get that really nice carbon fiber weave on the exterior, for those that are wondering. So this is the front-facing camera on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano. Incredibly thin, incredibly light, under 2 pounds, 1.9 pounds on my particular model. 720p webcam, 30 frames per second. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Is this gonna be good enough for Zoom or Skype? Let me know, I am curious. Now this is an infrared webcam, meaning you log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, and there's also a physical shutter switch allowing you to turn off the webcam, giving you more security and privacy. And there's a fingerprint scanner located below the keyboard next to the touchpad, allowing you to log in with Windows Hello as well. It worked really well, registering my finger each and every time I used it. Nice added layer of security. Now, this is my first experience with the 11th Gen Intel Core i7 1130G7 processor. You could also get it, of course, in a Core i7 1160G7. Of course, these are not quite as powerful as the 1165G7 Core i7s I've been looking at with the Tiger Lakes. These are a step below. But I got to say, with the numbers that I'm seeing so far in my initial review of this, uh, looking not too bad, even with this Core i5. I'm impressed. One thing that's really surprised me with my initial impressions of this device so far is how good the sound has been from those quad speakers. We've got two subwoofers, two tweeters, and the volume has been pretty good, mids, bass. I was actually pretty surprised, especially for such a thin and light ultra portable. Not something we see very often. Okay, let's bring it all home. So far, my initial impressions of the X1 Nano are really positive. I'm really liking this laptop. Uh, it is a little bit expensive, of course, but again, you get what you pay for. This is a premium device meant to be taken with you on the go. Although I know we're working from home, I like the potential that this has to offer and I look forward to putting through its paces and bringing you my full review coming very soon. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video and make sure you follow me on my social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. It's on those platforms I post updates. And why not check out our all new revamped Discord server? It's a great place for us to hang out and talk tech. Link will be in the description below. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who contributed this month to the channel. Want to become a member? Hit that join button below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.